Ryan. What's going on, folks? Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This, of course, is the Tom O'Brien Show. He'll be back uh, tomorrow. Today we have Basil Chapman and Tim Ord on, so I strongly recommend you guys stay right there and uh, basically we just have a great program for this hour. Let's take a look at what's going on. Of course, I was on earlier. If you missed my show filling in for Tommy, check it out because I went through some stuff. It was a nice slower morning, uh, but some good stuff covered. Nonetheless, we have the E-mini up about 0.51%. We have that SPY of about 0.48%. The Russell futures are tearing it up right now at 3.29% to the upside, the NQ's off slightly and that composite is uh, basically sideways to the upside. Uh, you had the composite kind of moving around a lot today. Let's see here. Basically, we're kind of been sideways the entire day as you kind of see from it. The Dow futures up about 1.78% and the Dow Jones Industrial, we're nearly at 41,000 after cracking 40,000, not too many sessions ago. Uh, gold doing okay, actually getting close to that UBS uh, kind of price target from about, I would say, mid-June of 2,500. Uh, of course, if you guys do not have uh, the Gold Report by Tom O'Brien, strongly recommend checking that out. You can go to tfnn.com. While you're there, take advantage of our Tiger Dollar bonus. Okay, you get a 20, 30, even 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollars. Those are applied uh, to every purchase. They never expire. Um, and if you've never been a Gold Report subscriber, strongly recommend doing it because you have a 30-day money-back guarantee if for whatever reason it does not work for you. Uh, but that has had a great run this year, so strongly recommend checking it out. Of course, we have Tim Ord on a little bit as well, and we all look forward uh, to his metal analysis. We have silver up about 189. I'm still looking for Mike's gifts in the den uh, because silver is doing okay today. Trading at 31.51 on that contract, and then copper still down uh, roughly where it was uh, this morning, around 444 on that contract. And then crude off a little bit as well at 8086. Trying to see if there's anything else interesting going on. I know SoFi popped today, uh, which was kind of nice. Rivian uh, actually doing okay today. If I remember last time I looked, yeah, 3.66% today. That has had such an insane run up, not on a you know, significant amount of volume, which of course is always something uh, to look into. But of course, they have earnings August 8th, and I believe. They're going to ride that into the earnings. Now, it's already anticipated that the earnings for everyone won't be so good. They had to shut down one of the factories in order to add more robots and increase productivity. We all expect that from uh, newer companies. They obviously got that massive cash injection from VW, and uh, they're projecting to be, I guess, cash positive or revenue positive um, by Q4. Uh, and so if they remain on track for that, I, I really do believe uh, Rivian can have some nice movement to the upside uh, we were around a few days ago, a few trading sessions, around 15.6 billion market cap, and now we're trading at 17.8. Uh, quite the move for Rivian as well. I don't know how loose is doing. This stock is dueling up 9%. If I could take this back, just even on a monthly, you, know, you can see a massive run up from this stock, even from the beginning of the July, uh, high of 437, complete sell off, and it looks like we're going to try to go back at least somewhere to that area. Uh, now, what I want to talk about is Broadcom a little bit. They had that 10-for-1 split coming off a little bit and kind of do some clarity on, like, what this company even is because I think there's a lot of conversation, obviously, around chips and semiconductors, but these things all do different kind of things, right? And so I was, I saw some, someone was talking about online that I knew about comparing NVIDIA to Broadcom and what is the better investment and this is where I say, like, you know, when you see these big names, it's easy to kind of all lump them together. It's like, oh, AI, AI, it all has to do with AI. And, I mean, yeah, while that's true in some certain capacity, th these companies do different things, right? And so it's really important to know what each of these companies do and how they fit into the major framework that, that will be a world uh, that is dependent on AI, in a sense, to do enterprise um, on an international basis. So... AVGO, looking at Broadcom, obviously this is down right now. You had a lot of people talking about Nancy Pelosi uh, buying a huge position in it before the split, uh, off about 1.8%. When you're talking about NVIDIA, right, you're talking about these GPUs, the graphical processor units. That is really the main, and, and, and of course, NVIDIA also has like CUDA and everything, which is a platform to kind of scale these, or use these GPUs, um, to their full extent, and, and there is some software 
behind that as well that is extraordinarily valuable. Um, but what AVGO does, what Broadcom does, is if you can think of like single computers, right, or single boards as like neurons, what Broadcom is, is that synaptic cleft between the neurons where all the communication goes on and all the brain activity. It's not a great analog, but it, it can kind of help. And Broadcom creates products that can create that ion movement from the neurons and make it faster, okay? And this is really the big thing. And when we're talking about getting away from kind of tech like CPUs into neural processing units or just in general XPUs, this is where Broadcom uh, really shines, right? Now, NVIDIA does compete in this realm of communications as well. They, ha they bought a company, I believe, called Mellanox, uh, a few years ago, and Mellanox's standard of communication is something called InfiniBand, okay? And I believe Azure Cloud uses InfiniBand to some certain extent, but the whole world really uses the Ethernet protocol for communication. I think we're like, A to, that doesn't matter, That's it's too technical, but the point is, is that Broadcom is not really creating uh, a proprietary protocol for communication like NVIDIA is trying to push with InfiniBand, via their Mellanox acquisition, but instead is kind of promoting this open source ethernet development, right? And we still use ethernet, we have for a very long time. And uh, that I think kind of puts them in a good position, right? Like this, this open source concept um, always is better than the closed source, especially when you're talking about something uh, like an industry that already has a developed and a an confirmed standard. So. Take a look at Broadcom. They are developing switches as well that have, uh, let me see if I can find this article on it. It was really actually pretty crazy. But they're developing switches with neural processing units built into them, which is really fascinating. Yeah, their latest switch silicon boasts a built-in neural networking engine. It says it can be trained to combat network congestion on the fly at line speeds, all without compromising latency and throughput. And this is the place where Broadcom can shine in a, you know, a few years in this future and when this really gets kind of fleshed out. Uh, folks, stay right there. We're going to be joined by Basil Chapman.